The iPhone 5 announcement date gets official, the award-winning indie game Bastion hits the iPad, and the PAX Mobile Games of the Year today on App Judgment. This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by the Ford Focus Electric. Welcome to App Judgment, your source for mobile app news and reviews. I'm Mauricio Bavanera. And I'm Jackie Talbot. And you didn't go to PAX this year. I did not. What's and PAX? It was, PAX is the Penny Arcade Expo. Wow. Where they show off tons of games that everyone is super stoked about. Up in Seattle, Washington, uh, the whole Rev Through Games crew went up there. Yes. Check out all their content at YouTube dot com slash retro games. It's all there. All the game stuff. But yes. we've got, we're going to be covering some of the uh, selections in the PAX 10. These are the indie games of the year selected by a huge panel oh, yeah. at PAX. We'll be covering that a little later, but first the biggest news of the day of course is Apple's announcement, uh, their event coming up on September 12th. This pretty much makes it Official it after is months and months official. of rumors. Yeah. Right. Uh, Apple sent out invites to an upcoming event in San Francisco at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts at 10 a.m. And the invite says it's almost here in classic Apple style. It's just a really simple <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, thing with a, uh, a calendar number, the 12th right. of September. Uh, but if you look at their drop shadow, it actually has a reflection of the number five, of course, referencing oh, that's clever. the iPhone 5. So, of course, the rumor roundup is still in effect. The new iPhone is rumored to include thinner design, a taller four-inch display, improved internal hardware, and much more, including uh, possibly a smaller dock connector, so you're gonna have to buy a bunch of adapters, people. Yeah. Uh, they may package the new iPhone with these redesigned earbuds, more in the rumor mill. Uh, they'll likely detail the final pieces of iOS 6 at this event, uh, including the new Maps application with an Apple mapping database. They're getting rid of Google. Yeah, more Google Maps. That's right. Facebook integration, shared photo streams, Siri for the iPad, new Siri functionality, an improved phone app, and much, much more. By the way, that rumored iPad, looks like they're gonna be announcing a separate event for that in October. And the latest, latest in that rumor mill is, uh, I don't know if you remember this, they bought Chomp. <coughs> Uh, a year or two ago, this was the app search engine, and it looks like the uh, app store is gonna have more of a Chomp-inspired look. Maybe, possibly. We'll see, yes. Again. The event is next week, so we're almost, it is almost here. We'll That's see. The only thing confirmed out of that entire list is that we're gonna <laughs> hear something on the 12th. Right, uh, and then we'll report whew. on it for reals. <laughs> Those are the rumors. In other big news, though, Rovio's doing some things. Yeah. They've got a huge tease. Uh, Angry Bird Makers. Yeah, they are the Angry Bird Makers. And guess what? Something pig is coming. Uh, I see what they did see there. See what they did yeah. there? Yeah, so coming on September 27th is the new game by the Angry Birds guys over at Rovio, and there is not a single slingshot in sight. Oh, so I wonder this what is, that means. So it, you're playing as the pigs yeah. in Angry Birds, and so it's just the other side, and so we're gonna have to see how the gameplay is. Interesting. It's going to initially launch on iOS, Android, and Mac, with Windows 8 and PC versions coming soon after. Cool. So the whole point is, you know, you see this, this teaser video, and it's like, what are, what are the bad piggies up to? What, mm, are, they, what are they doing there? Something pig is coming soon. Getting their own revenge from revenge. That's right. You can probably imagine what's going to be. <laughs> but there's a Bad Piggies Facebook page if you want to go get more information. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Chu and I covered Save My Telly not too long ago, and this was sort of the inverted uh, version of this game where you built little things to protect your television. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if it's going to be something like that. We can only speculate. Right. A lot of speculation in this episode. We're just big I'm sorry, guessers. guys. I'm so sorry. Here's <laughs> not speculative news. Oh, yeah. Out now is Bastion for the iPad. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. The kid pops him good. Uh, they Fella did uh, actually a pre-release right before PAX, but uh, at PAX they had their own booth. Um, and it's gonna cost you only $5, $4.99. So uh, Bastion basically is, it, it's a little Diablo 3-esque. Right, where you can kind of control and it's just running around kind of exploring and... Yeah, the, the world has fallen apart and you have to put it back together. But what make, made this game really special is you have uh, a voiceover the entire time telling you the story and even yeah. narrating your action. Then Kid finds his trusty shield.
Yeah, so it's kind of narrating you as like, oh, he, he goes forward on the on the tracks and yeah, he's got pulls this, out like, his hammer and gruff western thing it's, going it's on. So, it's so excellent and it really, really makes it like it's it's a new, interesting way to be able to pay attention to the storyline. And for yeah. me, it felt like it was a lot easier to pay attention because to. Because there's a voiceover going on, uh, filling you in on the story, it gets to the action right away. Absolutely. He, he That's, is the pacing part of the is a tutorial. lot more. Yeah. Uh, it really is sort of a magical experience, so you need to download this, on, download this for the iPad right now. Um, unfortunately, it's only going to work on the iPad 2 or the newest version of the iPad. It's a little graphic intensive. Um, but uh, if you've already played through Bastion, you should probably download it again because this includes the Stranger's Dream sequence, which was not in the original releases of Bastion for the Xbox 360 or PC, but later released as downloadable extras, so. Right, the, the developers are actually saying if you have played it previously, mm -hmm. um, check out the list of what's new in the mobile version and see if it's worth it, because it could be, an, you know, yeah. it's up to you. And hey, guess what, speaking of packs, as we mentioned, Rev3 Games has been up there covering it all weekend, mm -hmm. and you can see it all at their at the Rev3 Games YouTube channel, youtube.com slash rev3games. Yep. And since that happened, we wanted to show you the top three mobile games that were selected as part of the PAX 10 Indie Games of the Year. Mm -hmm. But first, a word from our sponsor. Today, we are once again sponsored by our friends at Ford. Last time, we took a look at some of the amazing technology built into the 2013 Focus ST. Today, we're excited to spend some time with the Ford Focus Electric. One of our favorite things about the Ford Focus Electric is that it's compatible with the My Ford mobile app. The app is great for those who may be new to the world of electric vehicles. It'll tell you how much charge you have left on your current trip, as well as a map with local charging stations, so you always know how far you can go on your current charge. You'll never get caught off guard and can drive confidently knowing your range. When your vehicle is plugged in, an icon of a battery will appear, showing exactly the percentage you have left on your current charge. You can also set your vehicle to charge exactly when you want it to based on a 24-hour period or how much electricity you use in your household. You can also precondition your car so it's the exact temperature you need it to be as soon as you get there. The My Ford mobile app is just one of the great features you'll find in the Ford Focus Electric. Tune in to future episodes to see more. Thanks again to Ford for sponsoring the show today and for their commitment to technology. All right, PAX, the PAX 10. This is a uh, selected by a committee of, I think, 50 judges. Mm -hmm. These are industry experts, and they took a look at a bunch of indie games over the course of the year and uh, chose the best ones based on uh, best overall fun factor and mm -hmm. gameplay. PAX is more user-focused in general, yeah, so they seem like, to like care about what we would all care about right. more. <laughs> is the game good? Okay, <laughs> right. we will select you. Uh, so within those 10, there's actually three uh, games that were mobile, mm -hmm. and uh, here's three of them. Uh, starting with Catch-22, this is a, I like the way they put this, this is a game about the paradox of avoiding problems, but creating other problems in the process. It's now, life. Yeah, now this game isn't out yet, you can't download it. It says it's available in April, which was how many months ago? A long months ago, a yeah. lot of months. Um, I checked their Twitter feed, and they, they say uh, as of September 2nd, uh, they say just a few weeks, but uh, it's out on Facebook free forever. So I went to their Facebook page and it's not there. I couldn't find it. Either. There is know. video of the game though, and it looks actually really good. I'm like, come on guys, like they're teasing us like crazy. <laughs> it looks really great. It reminds me a little of, oh, what was the time manipulation game? Braid. It reminds me of Braid. Yeah. You do a path with this globe around a bigger globe and whenever you hit a certain dot, you switch to a different globe, and you have to avoid the path you have just taken so right. you don't collide with yourself. Please, guys, release we'll the game. We'll about it, so, yeah. yeah. The other game we were excited about that was mobile from PAX was Containment. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is a zombie puzzle game that's available on Steam for PC and Mac, cool. as well as iOS. So the point of this game is it's a puzzle game, but it's, it's zombies. And this town of Franklin needs your help to fight off the undead hordes. Zombies. You can't go wrong with zombies. I know, but this is this is new and it's interesting. The yeah. core gameplay here was just color matching. Classic color matching yeah. game. Get like, well in this case it's sort of surround your enemy. Right. So you have like kind of a grid, you're looking down and there's there's, you know, people fighting the zombies. I guess there's mm -hmm. cops and Cops, some SWAT military teams men, and, and, and little vigilante girls. Some, and some little blonde girls wearing pink. <laughs> yeah. And what was interesting about this game is when it started off, I thought, mm, what's, I don't get you surround like, the zombies. Is, mm, okay. What do zombies do, though? They infect everyone. That's right. So, so if you're taking too long to get your colors matched, which I apparently had problems with, I did too. <laughs> you will get 
infected. Uh, the last game within the PAX 10 is Puzzle Juice. We've talked about Puzzle Juice before. Uh, Graham and I reviewed it a while back, I think it was in January of this year. Uh, but it is within this year, so it was one of the nominees. Right. Um, I like their slogan. This is a game that will punch your brain in the <laughs> face. And it is true. It is It is true. so true. This is kind of like uh, Tetris meets Boggle. Uh, it starts off as basic Tetris, where you've got, to, you've got the blocks falling, you have to line them up. Uh, but as soon as you create a line, it doesn't go away, they become letters, and they'll only go away once you spell something by uh, running your finger across the path yeah. of, of letters. You can also uh, create clusters, more color clustering here, colors of three or more. When you tap on those, those will become letters as, as well. Um, so the only way to get rid of blocks and lines is by Spelling things. Spelling things and finding letters yeah. as the blocks are coming down and stressing you out and freaking you out and really making you... And punching you, punching your brain, your brain in, the in the face. That's all it is. That's exactly uh, what it is. It's funny because you start off like, I know how to play Tetris. I know, you're like, you go in super cocky about it. I was just like, yup, no big deal. And I'm like, wait, what? Nope. <laughs> what? Nope. Why did I lose twice? You, you, st you start to sort of change the way you play Tetris because oh my God. letters are at, like, you start placing blocks. Uh, on top of each other on purpose, stuff that doesn't fit just right. to match colors. Yeah. It's really interesting, it's really cool, and uh, it's a well-deserved nomination. Definitely. So, yes. so go to uh, youtube.com slash games. check out all the stuff there. Come back here, subscribe, <laughs> and comment. Let us know what your favorite games of PAX were, because I, I think I have a few. I'm still yeah. looking over all the material that, that Zach recorded. but They uh, are doing so much. They have so many videos from it. If you're curious, just yeah. look at it all. Check it and out. And then obviously find us on Twitter and Facebook, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you.